It's episode 37 of your show, Breaking Into Here on Black Hollywood Live, and we're talking real estate next. You are tuned in to Black Hollywood Live, Breaking Into. Here we go. That's it. That's it. That's right, kids. It is breaking into here on Black Hollywood Live. We're getting pumped up because it is Tuesday. It's a hot day in Los Angeles. It is hot here in Los Angeles. I know, I know the rest of the world is hot too, but for me, it's just too much for me. But I am here. I am James Lodge Jr. I'm your host. And I'm so excited to bring someone else to you. It's his actual television debut. So when he becomes rich and famous, and he's on Bravo TV, <laughs> Million Dollar Sing Los Angeles season 12 or whatever, he'll remember me. I'll be the first. <laughs> And he's a guy who's a, a guy who's a great guy. I've had him on my radio show, and I decided to bring him onto the screen. And I think that's me, actually, and my and my thing right there. That's uh, oh my god, turn it Cut off. That out. There you go. I want to hear my voice twice. There we go. <laughs> live television. And he's a guy who works for Keller Williams Silicon Beach here in Los Angeles. We're going to talk all things real estate, not just here in LA, but just in general, some general rules. And if you think about getting a house, maybe it's time you should get one. Right? Who knows? And maybe he's the guy to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend and fellow Inglewoodian, Jerry Morales. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you, sir? I'm good. Good. Welcome. So now on, on Facebook, I have a Breaking Into page. You can follow us there. I, I, I give you tips on what's going on in the Breaking Into world, upcoming episodes, more on the guests that I have on the show, stuff about him is on there, too. Um, and, and on Twitter, you can use uh, the hashtag Breaking Into. Our, uh, our page is BHL Online on Twitter, so it's at BHL Online, and I'm at James Lott Jr. So, and where they can find you on Twitter? You can find me at Jer Morales, J E R R Morales. Yes, I saw that. And same thing on Facebook. Yes. And on Instagram, Jer Curl, just C U R L. Jer Curl. Yeah. Because I had the Jerry Curls for a long time. <laughs> had to get rid of them. Look a little more professional. <laughs> yeah. They're coming back one day, so you, everybody should stay, stay tuned for that. Here's what's funny. So today I was I was actually on the train earlier in Koreatown and. A guy probably around your age or younger had a flat top, high top. Mm, it mm. was just like, whoosh, whoosh. and I was oh. like, I had that back in the '90s. <laughs> I loved it. I was like, I don't get that haircut all the time. I loved it. <laughs> back when I wore my big Zebra Q, 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 Cavarucci pants and my yeah. rayon shirts. Oh, I had the, the beautiful curly, nice curly hair in ninth and tenth grade. Oh, and when I, when I went to freshman prints in high school, I got cornrows. So that was that was cool. I didn't fly. Just, see, I didn't do Back any of that. Cool. I didn't do any. I can see it on it. I didn't do any of that. I went. I went the route of big fro uh -huh. to the Lionel Richie shag uh -huh. to where I had a short and then I had big in the top. Okay. Then I did the kid and play. Okay. Then I had long hair. Where I just had it straight. I had it straight down my back. Whoa. I had a blonde. Wow. I had a red. I had all kind of hairstyles. Blonde and red. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Interesting. There's pictures, nice. on, there's pictures on our I'll, Facebook we should, page. We should, we should research that. Oh, they're, it's, they're on there. Research oh, they're that. on yeah, there. Yeah. You have to dig back, but they're on there. <laughs> um, and by never Jerry Curl. I wanted to get a Jerry Curl back in the '80s when it first started. There was King of Curl mm -hmm. here in LA, mm -hmm. South LA. Um, and my barber said I shouldn't because I had because you have good hair. My mother hates that term, of course, because <laughs> uh, the hair doesn't look good. It's just hair's hair. Yeah. Um, but she said you have good hair. Don't do it. It'll ruin your hair. So I didn't do it back in the day when it first started. Um, but I did put some um, activator in, kind of like, well, texturizer back in the like, 90s. Okay, I had okay. like a faux hawk kind of. A little texture. faux hawk going on. Yeah. My hair isn't curly naturally, so I don't. I didn't. Mine just curls. I just, lucky. It's beautiful. It's just nice. I love it. <laughs> but it's hard to maintain. That's the thing. Yeah, it is. You know, I, I was the guy that, like, okay, I got a 30 minute shower, make sure this is perfect. <laughs> Show up to school late because I want my hair to be all nice and everything. You know? So. Yes, that's. <laughs> I, I, have, I actually have a lot of men I know out there actually are more about their hair than women sometimes. <laughs> my brother in law, especially with his hair, it's all like, you have to make sure every strand sticks up. So I love that. That's funny. It's, it's so funny. Well, welcome to the show. Thank um, you. We are, as, we are, as we always do here, we like to lift each other up, share knowledge and pay it forward mm -hmm. that's something that he does he does charity work too which we'll talk about a little bit uh, later um, and actually I gave you some stuff didn't I a long you time did. I did I that's did participate right. Right. I, first time I was on your radio show I, I forgot about that so I thank did. you James yes James uh, attributes to charity as well so that's really awesome we try to give back yeah and you do you try in to any back. way shape or form I teamed up with a nonprofit there yes. to care for the homeless, yeah. and we started giving uh, clothes, hygiene products back mm -hmm. to people who are homeless and coming just coming out of uh, prison, yeah. who were addicted to drugs. They're rehabilitating yeah. at this moment. 
So this is just a good way for them to kind of get back into the flow of things and, and get you know, some clothes. I have, I have more stuff. I should you do. Type. I do have more stuff. I have. Okay. Um, okay. I, I for a while I was I was doing a cross country tour on Amtrak, and they give you. I just stay in the in the in the actual rooms. You did that. Yeah, I did. That's awesome because I thought about doing that. It's it was fun. like four something. Yeah, well, like for a few months. months. I don't yeah, know. Like, that's a pretty good deal to I go cross time. country. I did. Like that's awesome. Yeah, it's fine. That is really awesome. But they give you these little pouches of toiletries. I okay. have a whole bunch of them. Okay. Them to you. Yeah, that's good for them. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, really good. good. Um, so we give back. So we're not yeah, just we working just, hard. We're doing we're, our hustle. We're from the wood. Yes. Come on, we know. We, we know about back. the struggle. We know about giving back. Yes, we do actually, and that's yeah. the best way to give back is when you know what it's like. You make a little bit of success. Exactly. It's always good to exactly. Give back. It's always good to give back. So I advocate that very much. We're part of the village, you guys. My fans, you know me <laughs> in the village. You know about me yeah. in the village, and he's part of my village. We're all part of the village. Um, okay, so first let's just look, a quick little background because I know who you are, obviously, yeah. but they may not know who you are on, on here. Um, you're with Keller Williams Silicon Beach. So I used to be Keller, Keller Williams Marina Del Rey. Marina Del Rey. So, so explain so, so that a little bit. We're rebranding ourselves. We have new owners. So basically, right now, what we're doing is trying to really rebrand ourselves and push ourselves to the top to become the best producing franchise in all of Keller Williams. So that's okay. what we're doing right now. So I really like the whole rebranding, and it's all encompassing Silicon Beach all around on the coast. So it's Tell us from, where, from where to where. So Tell us the point. It, it's, it's very open-ended. Anywhere else, for me personally, okay. it's Dallas. up all the way, like in Malibu area, all the way down to Pal- Palos Verdes. Okay. That's to okay. me, all encompassing. Yeah, that's, that's hey, we're on the beach. We're on the beach, baby. Yeah, that we're is. on the beach, baby. So <laughs> Silicon Beach, let's go all the way down, all encompassing. Let's okay. do it, not limiting ourselves to just Marina Del Rey, which we we, we didn't naturally to I begin with. Things too, yeah. Hey, I'm Marina Del Rey. The first property I ever sold was in Sacramento. You know, I'm, li- I'm licensed all, in all of California. I'll get out there. I'll hustle oh, wow. to sell your home. You know, I'll do whatever it takes. That's okay. what it is. You're changing people's lives. I'm a superhero. Remember I told yeah, you that I know, the other day? Yeah, I know. I'm like, I realized. Like Sacramento. For <laughs> oh, not Sacramento. Sacramento. Bakersfield. Sorry. Bakersfield. Still, I think it was Central Valley. I, 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 still I was, really... was going to pick up a listing in Sacramento. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I was very close to picking up a listing. Wait, wait, here's the deal. So can you, because you are licensed in California, yeah. can you go anywhere then if someone says, I want you to sell me a house? Mm-hmm. I can go anywhere in California. I went to Humboldt State University and I have okay. old college buddies who are saying, hey, maybe you should come up here and help me buy my first property. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really make sense for me to travel 12 hours just no, to go no. sell one house. But, hey, no. it's, it's, I have that option. Well, I have I the mean, ability to at some house. point. I'm a licensed realtor in all of California. You fly $59 I, to Sacramento or Chico go. or whatever, Redding or whatever. I go to San Diego. Yeah. I can drive two hours. Yes, and make sell your, yeah. sell your house, sell your condo. Mm-hmm. Hey, if it's yeah. on the beach, it's called Silicon Beach to me. So <laughs> there you go. All right? So yeah. anywhere in California. Okay. In so because so, for those of you guys who don't know, if are not from California, maybe Silicon Beach is a takeoff of Silicon Valley. Yeah, exactly. In Northern California, a lot of the tech companies are now coming to L.A. Mm-hmm. and the L.A. area. Mm-hmm. So a lot of them started going to, I don't remember, first it was Santa Monica, Venice. Venice, because exactly. A lot of, it, was, it wasn't super expensive there yet. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they have a lot of cute little bungalows and all that kind of, and, and industrial stuff over there. And now they're they are and spreading. They're just bringing the value there. And you see a lot of people just coming in, and it's spreading all to the east and west side. So yeah. now you have all these tech companies coming in, all these developments coming in, like in Playa del Rey, off Jefferson. There's a brand new theater, Cinemark. I know. That I, love it. I, know. I go to theater all the yeah, time. Yeah, I, I was there it. last night. Okay. I was watching Batman, uh, The Killing Joke. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. animated movie. Really, yeah. really awesome. Okay. Mark Hamill, great Joker. Um, so, yeah, they have this new development all in Playa, all over, all across Silicon Beach, just bringing a lot of value yeah. to homes next to the beach on the west side, right? So what that's, what that's doing is, is that's making value of homes everywhere go up. Yes. In terms of anywhere pretty much essentially west of the 110. Yes. Is going 300 plus. I know. I live, I, I'm not going to tell you guys yeah. where I live, but I live in Inglewood. <laughs> that, I don't mind saying the city I live in. Um, and it's going up because Culver City next to it's already gone mm-hmm. up. Westchester, it's all, yeah, so it's, we're, we were next. Yeah, it's going to the million dollar mark in those areas yeah. for sure. And then Inglewood... Right, so that area is just booming as well with the stadium. The form is revitalized. Yes. The stadium's coming. Yes. I mean, you have condos that were in the high hundreds, low two hundreds, going in the high twos, low threes now. You know, so that's what's going on right now. I saw some um, in at the Inglewood Hawthorne border, like 120th, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and Crenshaw and Van Ness. Okay, yeah. They built they have a whole. They built a lot out there too. And they're like in the threes and fours. I saw. Yeah. Yeah, they're really going up next to the 24-hour fitness. Yeah, I go to that one. I go to that one. I go to the one on Slauson as well. Okay, okay. So, yeah, that's easily Hawthorne now. It's like I've seen homes five going to six. But Hawthorne's that were, still. When, yeah, when I first got into the real estate market, yeah. you know, industry, 400. 
high 300s. Now they're in the high fours, low fives, even sixes. Yeah, be careful because some and parts two, of Hawthorne are ghetto. Yeah. I'm sorry. Some parts like 135th. No. Uh, some parts are really are still a little dicey. Yeah. I mean. The values are going up, but that's the trend. It inevitably, inevitably goes up, right? So how much was the home that um, oh, yeah, 80, okay. 82, so, yeah, so I remember yeah, yeah, see, my, 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 my mother corrected us. I was on, on my radio show last week. I said the price. I was off by a, a thousand. I believe she said it was 34,000. I probably got it wrong yet. 36 so, to 38, I think it yeah, was. Yes, like, so it was in the 30, like, so we'll say 36,000 back in 1978 we bought our see, house. What year, what year was that again, James? 1978. Yeah, see, so there you go. Yeah. So, and the value is probably in the four or fives, whatever we're it is. There. Now, yeah, we're, we're getting we're, there. We're not, you know. We're going to sell my business, but we're getting there. But we're getting there. Same thing. You yeah. know, my grandma bought her home for 40,000, however much, in the yeah. 70s. You know, it's just the home that we bought was probably like 30s as well. So you live in Inglewood too, still. Live in Inglewood too. Yeah. We're in the over the 400 mark, the value of yeah. our home, right? So that inevitably happens to all real estate. So people say, when's the time to buy? When's the time to buy? Should I buy during you know when the economy's down, when home values are low? Should I go in the boom when interest rates are, are lower mm-hmm. and values are higher? I say the best time for anybody to buy is okay. when you're ready. Don't worry everybody? about the economy. Don't worry about anything okay. else. Worry about yourself. Okay. Worry about when you're ready. When are you ready? When is James ready? When is Jerry ready? When is anybody else ready? Yeah. Because that's the best point in time for anybody to, to make that life-changing event and to you know grow as a human and advance, right? Whether they want to have a family, whatever yeah. it is, pursue additional endeavors. The best time for anybody to invest is when they're ready themselves. Don't let external influences, don't let anybody else, you know, tell you otherwise. Oh, wait till the economy goes down, you get a good, yeah, but the interest rates are going to probably be higher, right? Yeah. So you're not really going to save that much more. Right now, interest rates are really low, values are high. So right? explain so, to people why you should, you should want your interest rate to be as low as possible. Well, you pay less to somebody else, yes, right? Yes. So you're, you're paying to an investor who's allowing you to use their capital to buy a home, right? So obviously you want to buy when interest rates are low. And right now, interest rates are historically low. Right. Last I checked, one of my clients was getting like a 3.6, which is really, really, really low. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah I know. You know that's good. It's, it's, it's good. Yeah. yeah. You can, in the threes, the mid threes, that's really good. That's really good. So yeah. you definitely want to take advantage of any, you know, interest rate that's low in any market. But at the end of the day, I mean, if you get like a 4.25 or up to five and you can afford it and it makes sense for you financially and, you know, you're advancing, hey, in five years, you can probably upgrade, right? So take advantage of that rather than throwing your money away in rent. Remember, if you get a fixed interest rate and you get a fixed loan, okay. you're paying that set amount for oh, right. for 30 years, 30 right? Years, 15, if you, if you years refinance, right, yeah. you can lower it. But if you stay yeah. there, you're, you're there. Mm-hmm. Now in LA in particular, yes. right, rents are skyrocketing. They're going, they're going high. They're really, it's, really, it's like San Francisco. Lock yourself in and yeah. get in and stay. You get so many advantages of, of buying a home. You know, tax cuts, tax mm-hmm. break, you know, the interest rates tax write off, right? So mm-hmm. there's a lot of advantages of, of owning property. You could tap into equity, pay off student loans. You can, uh, you know, fix up your house. Mm-hmm. You can invest into business endeavors, whatever mm-hmm. it is. I mean, there's many famous stories of people in Hollywood mm-hmm. who, you know, tap into all the equity into their home to finance this 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 film or whatever it is they're mm-hmm. doing, and it works. Yeah. Or it doesn't. I mean, but it's that uh, risk. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question because this is this is Black Hollywood Live. Mm-hmm. And we're talking mm-hmm. about people, not just black people, people of color mm-hmm. in general. Why should we own homes? Because it adds value to your, your your assets, right? Because I mean, to be honest, nowadays people are being displaced. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, yes, they're, they are. You brought rents, something I was gonna say. Rents are just historically high. Yeah. You know, I mean, minimum wage is in California is what ten now, ten fifty yeah, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So I mean, ridiculous. Can you really afford to pay upwards of a thousand dollars a month right. for a one bedroom making ten dollars an hour? No. Yeah. So now is the time to invest for your family and for your future, right? So that way, down the line, you you have that bit base to build from for your family and your future. Because you, whatever you lock yourself into, that's going to be the payment for 20 years from now when the rents are in the 5,000s, right? You're still locked into that 2,000, yes, 1,500 bill a month. My, uh, my mortgage is very low. I'm happy with the <laughs> price that my brother and I split. <laughs> there you go. And we, we, we refied a few years ago. We still yeah. are doing way mm-hmm. better than I know the rents would be in my neighborhood mm-hmm. for exactly. what they're getting. I exactly. mean, like it's, it's, I always tell people because, you know, I, I got my, I bought my first, I've owned several homes, uh, some outside of the California. And I never thought as a kid, because growing up in, in Inglewood and South LA, I never thought I was going to own any homes. This was like, mm-hmm. I, like this what, that's what white people do. I always thought that kind of thing. Like, it was <laughs> yeah, really fun. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I really thought that. 
that was like something to be really out of my reach. Mm-hmm. And I still know people today who are people of color, just like, well, I don't own a home, be a homeowner. Yeah. And I was like, but you'd understand. You said it a little bit, a little, a little bit a second ago. You're paying to somebody else. It's like almost like throwing money away. Throwing money away all those years. All those years. I mean, if you're paying what twelve hundred dollars a month. Mm-hmm. That's ten months is twelve thousand. Add another two, twenty four, so fourteen forty a year, right? Mm-hmm. Multiply that by five, you're upwards of fifty thousand dollars that you just threw away. You don't even own anything. You don't own anything. No. And remember, when you people don't understand equity, sometimes what that is is money in your pocket. Mm-hmm. That's your asset, your value, right? So if your home is worth two hundred thousand, or you owe two hundred thousand on your home, and it's worth four hundred thousand, that means you have two hundred thousand dollars worth of equity. If you chose to refinance and pull equity out, you could still pull like $100,000 cash, put into your pocket, right. and do whatever you, not necessarily whatever you want right. with it, but you can invest into it, fix your house, take a trip, you know, pay off your credit right. card, stuff like that. So if, you know, you do get on harsh times, there is ways to, to help compensate mm-hmm. for that. Yeah, because some people, because I know you mentioned something just briefly when you were talking a little earlier mm-hmm. about being people being displaced, and that is happening when... The, the dreaded word gentrification. When things happen, because I've seen it happen in San Francisco, I've seen it happen in mm-hmm, LA, mm-hmm. in Oakland, I've seen it happen where we get growth going, because it's happening right now in my neighborhood. A lot of white folks are coming in. Mm-hmm, they come, mm-hmm. they coming back. Oh, yeah, they're all coming from. They all left when I got there in the 70s, but now they're back. <laughs> they're coming back, come crawling yes, they're back. back. Hey, they're back. And they're, home and prices are not going down. And they're being told to come to Inglewood. They I have are. friends or friends of mine yeah. who are why you told me they I tell to people to go to Inglewood yeah. too. I'm, a, I'm proud of Inglewoodian. Yeah. You know, I tell people, hey, I know I know the better areas. Let's make this town even better. You know, I'm not one for displacing people, right. and that's not who I am, but this is what's going on, and, you know, I, I have to accommodate accordingly, right? right? Some people can't afford Culver City, you know? So where what's the alternative? Hawthorne can get ghetto on 135th. Yes, it can, over there. So see, yeah. there you go. They don't want to go as far south as Torrance. Yes. Even Torrance has some ghetto areas. Oh, Everybody, I know, I know. They do. Yeah, Torrance yeah. is big, though. Torrance yeah, is really big. Yeah, Torrance is really big. So, you know, I'm, you know a lot of people are moving to Inglewood, and... And changing gears and really realizing, hey, and also the stadium coming in is really kind of getting a lot of people motivated to say, hey, this is a good alternative. Yeah. But inevitably, it's, it's raising rents. So yeah. that's the thing that, you know, it's a factor to be able to take into consideration. But to me, it's, hey, you have to adapt. You have to figure out yeah. what are you going to do? You know, do you, I mean, if you can't afford this right now, what are you doing to, to advance yourself in your, in your life? Right. I mean, $10 an hour isn't the best and most promising forever. So maybe you should use that as motivation to you know pursue additional endeavors and grow as a human being and and be able to afford the lifestyle that you want to live comfortably right but i mean either way at the end of the day we're in a first world country so well i we are but i mean no good but my thing is i want to bring up to people is that it's maybe that's the whole thing maybe we should come together Mm -hmm, no matter mm -hmm. what race you are Mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. person of color and maybe try to buy into your neighborhood. Like maybe try to yeah. pull sort resources together and, mm-hmm. and buy a house together with somebody mm-hmm. that you trust, a cousin or a sister. Yeah, or, yeah. I live with my brother and we're fine. I mean, I like, can yeah. just find See, there, that's a good example yeah. and I like that a lot. And it makes me think a lot about, you know, some of the people I know who would benefit from that. Because the truth of the matter is, some people can't afford to buy a home on their own, even as a unit, a couple, a married couple, 300000 That doesn't really go too far in terms of Inglewood, Hawthorne anymore at all. You can't buy a home in Inglewood for three hundred thousand. Condo, yeah, not a home. So you know, an alternative that people do look into is a duplex or something yeah, like that, or a too, bigger yeah. house. You know, maybe yeah. a four or five bedroom house. Yeah. Two families can afford that mm-hmm. for five hundred thousand, or a duplex alternative. Mm-hmm. You know, so those are you know ways that people can get themselves into homes, and then they work it out. They say, okay, down the line, you know, the, the duplex is worth five hundred thousand. We only owe mm-hmm. two. Let's take out the equity. You could buy your house. I'll stay here. Let's work it out. We all have to come together at the end right. of the day. That's my village. And never, never feel village. ashamed of that. Right. Family and friends are always going to be there for you, right? So I know, I know, I know people who are friends mm-hmm. who buy house together, or yeah. or like they pull resources you, together. You, you, you know, people in the back of their heads, they know who they can trust and who they can't trust. Right. You know what I'm saying? You've seen people the way they work and the way they operate, right. the way they manage their money. If you've been with, with yeah. people long enough, you know are the people that you can and you can't trust with money. Well, I hopefully, just, hopefully, well, hopefully, hopefully. No, that's true. That's true. And actually, and I, it's, it's almost it's almost it's a little more than a roommate situation. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. even some rooms you be living, some people you can be friends with can't live with yeah, them, yeah. and you don't know that until you move in. Yeah. But there's some people if you feel like you can live with somebody and you can trust them on some level, uh-huh. I say pull resources together. Yeah. And do something. At least get a starter home, maybe. Yeah. Right. Or a small condo, two bed mm-hmm. condo. You guys split it. You know that'd yeah. be a really good alternative. That way, you guys both know you guys are locked in. You guys have a place you call home. 
you won't have rent raise, you know. So th- those are a really good alternative for people as well. That's true. Yeah. But, but my whole thing is I'm just like telling people, instead of, instead of having the, the defeatist ads, you know, we just can't, that's it, we're just going to be displaced and that's it, we're done. Um, maybe try to find ways to stay in our community and mm-hmm. figure out a way to do it and actually invest in it. And I think by rebuying homes in our community, then it still stays kind of what, you know. Exactly. Like, the like, heart like, stays yes, in the stays community, yes. you know what I'm saying? And, and that's the thing I like is that you know, a lot of people from Inglewood, they do have that Inglewood pride. Yes. A lot of people do have that Inglewood pride and they want to come back and they want to help develop their community. They want to change their community. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, like, I'm from um, Inglewood High School. I graduated Inglewood Me High too. School. The, the AVID program, Advancement Via the Individual Determination. And a lot of people that come back, they really want to just change the city. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot, So, basically, the program advocates for high school students to go to college, right? But the point of it is to come back and to give back to your community. Yes. You know, to grow and develop that community to, I to thrive. So, I, I would like to see a lot more of that. Don't run away. I mean, hey, if you have to go somewhere else, hey, that's that's. Yeah. that's you know, I'm not saying it's happens. easy. We're not saying it's like not well, easy just, at just, all. Yeah, yeah. Together. Like we're saying some people aren't making enough. Money. It's it's tough out it there. It is tough. It really is tough, and that's just the world we're in. Play with the hand you're dealt. You can cry about it all you want, right. but that spill milk isn't going to go anywhere. Get a paper towel, wipe it off, yeah. figure out what do you need to do to to succeed and to have a happy yeah. life. Yeah. You know, and that's what some some things some people they don't get sometimes, right? And yeah. you know, it's it's always good to maybe take a couple steps back and realize where are you. How can you, you position yourself so that you can do things like buy a home, right? Some people say, oh, I'm not going to buy a home for a year or two. I'm not going to worry about it right now. I say, well, actually, right now is a good time to, to start thinking about it because we can set and gu- put guidelines for you to figure out what it's going to take to buy a home in a year or two, just like anything else. It takes, what, four years to get a college degree, five yeah. now? That's a commitment you take, right? And then you come out with all this debt. Same thing with a home. It takes time to plan. This just can't happen overnight. Hey, for right. some people, it can some people, they just got the money, they yeah, got the yeah, backing right. with the family. Right. But for others, it, it is going to take time. It's going to take months. It's going to take years of proper planning. It's a big life-changing event. And when I, when I think about it, you know, it really is such a big thing to really, to really grasp in terms of those are people I'm going to help change their life and they're taking pictures that are going to last forever. When they go through the old photo albums, that'll be on Facebook now, not the old well, Yeah, now you're down these, right? No, I know. Old, you know. That's a they, thought. When they go through all the old photo albums on Facebook and they see all the hashtags, you know, they're going to, I'm going to be the, the cause of that. Mm-hmm. How much I advocated on behalf of my clients. Yeah. You know, did I fight for them enough? Did I get them into the home that they really, really wanted? Yeah. You know, I think about that all the time and that's how I, I motivate myself and pump myself up every morning. Am I advocating and am I fighting for my clients to get them what they want every day? So that's why I call myself a superhero because I'm changing people's lives. You know, and I grew up a big comic book fan. I always wanted to be, yes. you know, <laughs> Iron Man, Daredevil. Those are some of my favorites. Um, so, you know, now I've become a superhero, which is yeah. pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. Itself. Now, okay, so a little background about you. So, but you went to Inglewood. Did you mm-hmm. always want to be in real estate or did it come to you a certain way? You no, know, um, I didn't always think about real estate. It was in the back of my head. I mean, when I was little, I read a lot of Daredevil, so I wanted to be a lawyer, but I never really, like, grasped and thought about that too much um you know i really in, in college I, I was a political science major oh okay. so I, I thought about getting into politics okay. wasn't really sure what i really want to do but you know a passion that i didn't really realize that i had was always just just brainstorming and thinking of new ideas okay. and i was a, a writing minor okay okay got it and i started thinking about it more and i was like it would be so awesome to just to just write stories like to change yeah. the Marvel Cinematic Universe, okay. um, Star Wars, you know, to add on to yeah. that, to add on to characters like Dash Rendar, you know, people that characters that fans love but nobody really knows about. Okay. And now mm-hmm. with the big boom of all the, the movies yeah, coming it's out, now. Yeah, you know, it's happening, yeah, now. It's happening now. Just just any type of story, really. You know, I could tell a story about you know the kid growing up in Inglewood, you yeah. know, or just how a village can really raise a child, you know. Um, and so I, I switched majors to English creative writing. And when okay. I took my first class, literature identity representation, it was just like, wow, this is awesome. I yes. love this. I love what I'm hearing. And you can get political in there, too. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's just all encompassing. It's just everything. Yeah. That's what I love about English. There, there is no, no realm that you don't get into. Yeah. Talk about music. You can talk about sports. You mm-hmm. know, everything is in writing. I was a, finance, a real estate and finance writer um, in downtown L.A. Okay. at some point. So, you know, I've done it all. And so I decided to drop the political science, okay. pursue writing, right? After college, I said, you know, I always wanted a second profession to get into as a, as a backup, right? So just in case writing didn't work out, okay. so I decided, what am I going to do? I thought about getting into web development, okay. programming. 
I was like, but I'm a people person. Okay. And I have family in real estate, and they're pretty successful, right? So I said, you know, you can you can get pretty successful in real estate. People are always going to need homes. I'm a social guy. I get out there. I talk to people. And I said, you know, it just fits. It just fits mm-hmm. with my personality. Um, it's not a lot of classes, three classes you have to take. Okay. Pass, you have to pass the state exam. I said, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time, you know, pursuing a second yeah. degree. I can do this on the side while I'm writing. Yeah, people do it on the side all the time. And so, you know, I have uh, aspirations to get into screenwriting and acting very, very okay. soon, which I'm going to pursue um, before fall. I'm going to really get my gears going with that. Okay. And so I decided, you know, Let's do real estate. Let's, let's, let's build a foundation for yourself before you start pursuing additional endeavors. Okay. Right? So I want to do this for a couple of years on, two, on year two, going on year three now. Okay. I decided let's do this for a little while, and then let's let's pursue the screenwriting acting after. Okay. And so I'm seeing the success I wanted to see before I just start, decide to d- dive into yeah. my additional endeavors that I want to pursue. So now I feel comfortable making that transition into the screenwriting acting portion of my life. Now, why do you want to get into why not? this unstable, <laughs> crazy business we call show business? <laughs> because show crazy. business is fun, baby. Um, you know, I just... Uh, uh, I, really, I love it, of course. I, 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 would, I would hope that one day people will look at me and, and see somebody that um, they can rely on to trust their opinion. Okay. You know, trust this, that he, he, he's very valid, he's very composed, he knows what he's talking about, and, and if he's for something, maybe we should, we should listen. Yeah. to what he's saying and nowadays an image and identity and, and who you are as a celebrity speaks much more volume than a lot of people in the political yeah. spectrum political realm right so that's one reason another reason I just love the idea of just screenwriting it's just to, to create something from nothing it's just okay. it's just very interesting to me okay. to and then to be able to change different um, already established you know um, stories right and to add my own influence into them, right? Okay. Into just my ideas, and then just just acting in general. Just yeah. for, for me personally, being able to, I'm, I'm reading more about it and just thinking about like just changing from like I can probably do the whole ghetto thug thing yeah. to like, you know, probably a computer hacker or something okay. like that, yeah. right? I can probably like do okay. all these different things and just yeah. like to me that's really exciting. Yeah. And I guess what's really exciting for me as an individual personally is that. I do have these aspirations, so I feel like I'm always going to be moving forward and, and aspiring to more and more and just kind of keep reaching higher and higher. And to me, that's really interesting because it, it makes life fun. Yeah. It, I always have something new to look forward to. Yeah. Real estate's really exciting. I love my clients. I love doing what I do. Yeah. But to have these additional endeavors is, is really fun as well because yeah. th- I'm not there yet. I'm, I'm, I'm reaching towards it. I know when I get into it, I know that I'm going to have more endeavors that I'm going to yeah. want to get into that I never even thought back then. When I first twenty five made twenty four made the decision yeah. to get into real estate. Now yeah. I'm twenty seven. You know, getting into screenwriting acting. Like when I'm thirty, I'm probably gonna have endeavors that I never would have thought that back then I would ever imagine yeah. of, of pursuing. Um, okay, so back to the real estate thing. It's mm-hmm. uh, how did you get? Because Keller Williams is a name. Mm-hmm. It's a name here, and mm-hmm. it's a big name here in Southern California. How did you get uh, worked up with them? So I actually interviewed five different offices before I decided to join Keller Williams Marina Del Rey. Okay. So I was advised, you know, I, I was set on Coldwell Banker in Westchester. Oh, okay. I, don't I was like, I okay. I'm going to Coldwell Banker Westchester. I'm going to do it no matter oh, what. It's right down the street. It's convenient, easy. I get there in five minutes. Yes. But big thing. In I was advised n- nothing wrong with them at all. I just no. I was advised to interview different offices, get of different vibes, sure. get different feels. Yeah, sure. And so I interviewed that office, and I went to the team meeting in the morning. It was like a Tuesday at 9 a.m. The team meeting was pretty cool, pretty awesome, and I met with the team leader at the time, Donna, I forget her last name, Donna, and I just talking to her, she just really, really opening, very welcoming, I just gave me a tour of the office, and I just felt the camaraderie, and I didn't realize at the time, but that was something I really, really wanted. When I started walking around the office, there were just people, you know, talking to me, hey, how you doing, oh, you just got your license, oh, really cool, I like that, if you ever need any help, here's, here's my card, you know, give me a call, I'm here to help you, I, I like that a lot. Because it takes a village to raise a child, yes, and I yes. was like, "This is a new village. I can get into a new tribe. Yeah. These people can get my back." Yes. You know, so I, I really liked that a lot about that company yeah. and that, you know, branch in particular. And so I said, "This is this is where I want to call home." It's are there a lot? I worked in insurance and for as insurance education for eight years, mm-hmm. and there weren't a lot of uh, people of color. How is it in uh, real estate? Oh, it's all mixed. It's all mixed. It's a it's a, it's a melting pot. It's a blend. It's all over the place. So your now your particular branch is a mix. Yeah, it's mixed. Okay, yeah, you got everybody there. 
Okay. Everybody. So it's, it's really cool. I like it a lot. Have you ever had any problems being a person of color showing someone a house? Actually, to be quite honest, no. And I, it's probably good. because we're in L.A. Okay, good. It's probably because we're in L.A. I haven't had problems in, in general. I mean, good. I'm a pretty welcoming, opening guy. I, I really try to compose myself as and you know, dress well and, and compose myself as a person that somebody would really rely on in terms of real yeah. estate. I mean, I've had people give my car, like, you old enough to be in real estate? Like, you, you sure? Yeah, he does look like he's 12. <laughs> Now, you know, folks, you look like 12 years old. I see it to my I see him like 27. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, that is ridiculous. 27. 27. Yeah. He's just, all 27. Just so you know, I just came back from, you know, Europe. And yeah, whatever. Did the whole thing. He's like he's 12. But yes, yeah, so I'm sure I love it. I love it. Hey, I, I love well, you. Get my age, don't yeah, come handy. Exactly. Come handy. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure, I'm sure I must be a thing. People think, are you old? Yeah, are you old? Yeah, yeah. Good? yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. You know, but people, when they, when they start talking to me and picking yeah. my brain, people will test you. And, and I know for a fact people test me more than the average realtor because mm -hmm. I look young. And they kind of just kind of want to see, they vet me and see, hey, is this somebody that, that knows what's up? And, yeah. you know, more times than none, they, they call yeah. me back. So That makes sense. No, it, it, we all have our things, but, yeah, you, exactly. but you do look young. I won't yeah. say that. That's, that's not fair <laughs> at all. Uh, fair. Okay, so, I mean, so how, what, are, what are some of the things you like about real estate, though, that you like doing in real estate? Like, so you say you're like a superhero, I get that kind of yeah, stuff, yeah, but yeah. what does it kind of bring to you inside when you, when you do it? Well, some of the things I, I like, and I'll, I just I love the freedom. Okay. And that's, that's all that, that goes with, you know, I can I can do what I want when I want. So if I want to work 12 hours a day, I'll work 12 hours that okay. day. Okay. And I'll do that Monday through Thursday, and then I'll work five on Friday. Oh, okay. You know, kind of like uh, okay. balance it out a little bit. Okay. Right? So I, I had this streak where I just worked pretty much from the beginning of the year, January, until I went on to Europe in, in April. I just worked nonstop. Yeah. I said, you know, I'm just going to do it, right? Yeah. And I did, did my two-week trip. And then I, I, I uh, after that, I, I worked hard again for a cool minute. And then I had back-to-back -back weekends of, like, going out of town for weddings, oh, yeah, other events, price, birthday parties, life stuff. stuff. Um, but, you know, what I love right now is that we're in a technology age. Yes. And we have the ability to communicate with people via phone, text, email. And you don't have to be actually physically present at all times. But you can still work. You can put in the work. You can, you know, step outside, have a sidebar conversation for, you know, 30 minutes and still get the job done. Yes. Go back to your computer, you know, write offers, do what it takes to get that person to a home. Um, even if I had to work for two hours. I mean, when I was in Europe, I worked for a couple of hours at a time, you know, in a hostel. That's fine. You know, yeah. and that, that's fine. You got Skype, you got the internet. Yeah. We're there to work. Yeah. So I know what my job entails, so mm -hmm. I'm here to work. Um, but you know what I do love as I get to see the neighborhood. Yeah. I do love that too. Because I really learned a, lot, a little bit more about Inglewood than I, yeah, sure. I really didn't know. I'm you sure. know, just the yeah. back streets. Not, like, I know back streets, like, <laughs> like way easier now. Like, Which is very, if you're from L.A., it's very <laughs> it's important really to know. And I get to know other areas. Like, when yeah. I came out here, you know, to, to the Valley area, I was like, well, I've been there for to show homes. So I yeah. was like, hey, that's 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 easy for me. I just want to mention, Inglewood is a place that's so funny because, everybody, you know, Inglewood is no good and all that. I get it. Uh, but it's actually a very large place for the strange borders. Yeah, it yeah. stops and starts. It goes like boom, Yeah, because where boom, I live boom, is where people like, like, live. Boom. And yeah, it's near cities yeah. and things. And, yeah. um, and it's doing parsing with it. There's some parsing with that are really super nice. Yeah. And there are parts that are... Like I tell people, there's parts that you'll think it's Westchester. Yes. If you pick oh, them yeah. up and you just went boom, yeah. boom, boom, and you're like, which one's Inglewood, which one's Culver City, which one's Westchester, you'd say... Culver, Westchester, England, and I'm like, nope. Yep, I know. Flip them around. So, and then you got some really ghetto places where it's like, hold up. Yes. You need to funny. run yeah. and get out of here. Yeah, it's a little much. There's a joke that uh, you say, call uh, right past um, Century and Inglewood. Yes. Going towards uh, south, towards Hawthorne, call that okay. little yes. TJ. Yeah. yeah there's <laughs> Everybody actually, calls yes. that little TJ. Yes, it was a lot of there. <laughs> it's a lot. It's, it's really funny how there, how there are some parts that are so bad <laughs> and haven't haven't changed yet yeah yeah and there are parts that were bad when i grew up and mm -hmm. they're different now they're totally different now yeah and you know what's interesting is that you do have some good charter schools around yes which i've seen that i like because and you know there's some people that are going to come back and they're going to clean that little section of the city up i hope here's this is my only hope that they don't do this in Rio del rey or playa del rey there's a section that whole marsh I hope it stays. I know, I know. Stays. I haven't heard anything about I mean, that. Because they built everything on the other yeah, side. Yeah, on the other Everything's side, all exactly. built up. I'm like, oh, please don't mess up Mars. I, I've walked through it. I've biked through it. I'm like, I just want to keep it. <laughs> Where it's at. It keeps something. Yeah, it keeps something. Something there. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Oh, I've been thinking about that, too. I'm like, I hope my 2030 is not like I this know. big old sky rises there, like, you know, the marsh. Because L.A., I mean, you know, and also England has the metro coming through. Mm -hmm. The LA is by my house, actually, and it's coming through, and... 
It's. I mean, it's Inglewood's really changing. I mean, it's, and all of LA is changing. Yeah, everywhere. Even yes. even even the South Bay. Everywhere. Everywhere is changing. There's construction mm-hmm. everywhere. Which is good. It's a nice, good thing that's yeah. going on right now, yeah. because it gives people jobs. You know, it adds more value, but just has yeah. more. You have more places to go. Right. Well, I, I have clients who are in Manhattan Beach, and I guess well, six months ago the Kardashians were looking over there. Whoa, really? And they didn't Manhattan want them there, Beach. but they didn't want them there. <laughs> Get because out, kick the, them out. Well, they said they didn't want them because all the paparazzi and all the craziness yeah, is going to yeah. come follow. Okay. And there are parts of the beach. You know, if you live in the beach cities, it's very calm and relaxed. It's a whole different way yeah, of life, yeah. as you know, because you, yeah, yeah. sell, you sell that, obviously, yeah. the way of life. Isn't that part of what you do? You sell the way of life, too. Yeah, a lifestyle. Wherever it, wherever, you sell a lifestyle, yeah. for sure. Yeah, right. so the Kardashians not going there. That's that's super funny. They're glad, and they were yeah. like, "We're glad. We don't want them here. It's just it's a little too much." <laughs> that's super funny. But I, I'm sure if they did move there, they'd probably probably totally. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna go door knock yeah. in Manhattan Beach. Should and say, ask them. We kicked the Kardashians out. That's yeah, right. We, they, we they, made they, sure they were out of here for you. They said they did so, not want them there. And when at I all. when I sell homes in, in Manhattan, I'm gonna say, "Hey, oh, I'd love to live in Manhattan Beach one day." That's what I like. Uh, okay, so now we have to mention this because this, this is like this has just come through the pike as we're having you on my show. For Keller Williams Silicon Beach Realty, you are one of the top 10 listing value for month to date in June. Yeah, yeah. So that's just the hard work paying off. Yeah. Um, I had a client who needed to list a property in Playa ASAP. You know, I had been working with them since the end of December. And so finally came to fruition sometime yes. in June. Um, they were looking to buy and they decided to change gears. Um, and they had, you know, an asset that they needed to, to sell and... I did that, and then I had another property in Carson I had been working on since end of January, early February. It just all kind of came about yeah. months and months later, and I stuck with both of them for a while. And like, yeah. it's interesting because my clients like you work your a off, and I'm just like, I, I, I don't really think I do, but okay. I guess I do, because when I'm texting people back at 10 p.m. That's or hard. answering the calls at 8 a.m. and like. To me, but to me, I always tell people you're my family now. Like, yeah. if I'm gonna invest into your life, I need to get to know you. Yeah. I need to kind of get to know who you are, how you operate, so you become part of my family. And like, yeah. I check in with people. You know, I check in with them, see how you yeah. guys are doing, how, what's up, how, how's everything going, just a text, email, okay. whatever it is. Yeah. Sometimes I'll give a call and I have like a ten minute sidebar conversation with the okay. old client, just because I care. I do care, and I want to just, are you cool? Is everything mm-hmm. good? Do you need any advice? Because I know some people are they're thinking about stuff, but they're like, I don't want to bug him. He, you know, he's working. So I just like to follow up with yeah. people and say, hey, you're part of of my family now. Yeah, I'm gonna take care of you. So yeah, it was it was. I didn't know that was that was coming. Um, Congratulations. I saw it. Thank you. And so it yeah. just reinforces that hey. You, if you put your mind to purpose and, and you, you want to do anything, if you're really focused and you hone in, all those hours, I mean, I did so many hours. You don't get paid till you get so hours. Right, no, right, no, exactly. And right. I've done dozens and dozons of open houses. And yes. I'm, I'm teaching. I rescheduled my class. Yes. It was going to be this Friday. I rescheduled okay. it to next Friday okay. to give myself some time to really he is prepare. teaching. Also, so, where? Where are you teaching in, at? In uh, Silicon Beach, Keller Williams, Silicon Beach. So yep. if, if any realtors want to come and, and, and see the class and there see what go. I have to offer you and see what we can offer you, Give me a holler. Okay. You know I'm here. Uh, like I said, Jer Morales on Twitter, so you, or Jer Curl on Instagram. You could find me. Um, but yeah, so I'm teaching. Uh, this is be my second class. So I taught my first class in March. Okay. It was like the first week of March, second week of March. Yeah. So because in my office they had seen I'd done so many open houses, and yeah. it, it attributes to my productivity. I mean, you'd be crazy how things just kind of like link up just by meeting people and networking yeah. and, and and doing that type of thing. Like I literally built a business relation with somebody who's working in the Hollywood area uh, months later who I met yeah. in an open house who needs somebody to help him buy a property help him become a buyer's agent so that sends me leads and I, I help you know facilitate yeah. those leads when we first met it was supposed to be a blind meeting and a mutual lender set us up and we found out that we had met each other a few months ago at an okay. open house I had hosted mm. I said weren't you at that open house I think it was like on Freeman on Freeman and Hawthorne he's like he looked at me he's like oh yeah I remember you he's like that's yeah. right and at that point, it wasn't even a meeting anymore. It was just like, okay, so do you want to help me? I said, yeah. It's just it became the familiarity. Put yourself out there, stay in your lane, yes. and good things will follow, right? I've, I've done so many open houses, made so many calls, followed up with so yeah. many people, driven out there, you know, just go to Rancho to go show homes, yeah. go to Bakersfield to go sell your first I property, go, go. do what it takes to to build a reputation, to say, yeah. hey, I have under my belt, hey, I've sold property, you know, yeah. I've done this. So it's just you put the effort out there, and the yes. universe will return it. Yes. Now I asked my. Is this, this is towards the end of our conversation already? Already? Are you? Serious? No. You're not surprised. Almost six o'clock. No, no. This, wow. 
I know. It's, 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 it's my deal. Fast. It goes by fast. This is my deal. I need to done great. Okay, so I ask my, I ask everybody out there knows who watches my show. I ask my client, my clients, my guests the same two questions. I don't prep them beforehand. They don't know what the questions are, and you have to answer them. You have the first thing that comes to mind. That's like the first that, thing that comes to mind. That might be a, a not so good thing. This publicity so, might be bad. No, but I want you to say something. I want you to say what you feel. So the first question is. The English language. I have a big, a big fan of the English language and how it can it can propel you forward or stop you in your tracks or make you feel bad, or make you feel good. What word in the English language do you think we should stop saying or take out of our vocabulary? I think we should stop saying turnt. T U R N T. T U R N T. Come on, come I on. I seat it. And turnt turnt it. Yes. Maybe even twerk. Can we add two in Tyler there? Twerk. You can add two, two sure. T's, man. Come on. Turnt and twerk. Just say you're going to go get wasted. Let's go. Come on, turnt. Come on, man. Twerking. Do you say lit? Everybody says lit. Actually, I, I've added lit. Yeah, a, little, a little bit to my vocabulary. Okay. I, I'm really resistant to adding these words to my yeah, vocabulary. No. But they're, they're a form of expression. I'm too they're old a form for all those words. I'm too old for all those words. So I don't really try to emphasize on it too much. It's a form of expression. Yes. If you understand, you comprehend it. I feel like it's yeah. fine. But let's not detract from actually learning proper Thank English you. language. That's Thank that's you. my point. Thank you, Power Rangers. Uh, okay, so then on the opposite side of that, that's a good answer I like that. The opposite side of that is what word do you think we should either bring back and put into our vocabulary or say more of? Uh, well, I, I think I said this last time on the radio show. I don't know if you remember. Maybe. Do you remember? I don't remember. I do eight thousand of these. I don't remember. Steadfast? Oh, I got it so funny. You did say steadfast. I like that word. Yeah. It's very Taurus. Yeah, yeah, I always yeah. say we're steadfast. Yeah, yeah. So just steadfast. You know, like same as staying in your lane yeah. pretty much. It's a yeah. more proper, yeah. you know, a way of like saying that. Like steadfast. That. You know, so remain steadfast. Yeah. Or just, you know, I like that word a lot. Yeah. It's very empowering. And it well, you, feels just gave me, you gave me two awesome. good words that no one else has said so far on the show. So this is good. Because <laughs> like, one day I'm going to do a whole thing where I'm going to have a collage by saying You're talking it. about turn and, and, uh, and steadfast. twerk, right? And, well, not steadfast. <laughs> no, 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 Don't just, tell me you said that either. Know, Someone told me, they, 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 what was the, the last person I had said? She was tired of swag. Swag? She was tired of that See, word. my dad uses swag a lot, but he uses it for, for my dogs more than anything, especially my dog Jack. He's a little Jack Russell. He was a Jumbo Jack last Halloween. He's probably going to be Jack Sparrow or Jack Skellington this okay. year. But he, whenever Jack's like walking around, you know how dogs got that yes. strut? He's like, oh yeah, Jack has a lot of swag. <laughs> <laughs> did you Jack when he went to high school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah wow. He did. Well, for me, oh, also, while we're getting to family, shout yes. outs to my brother. Happy oh, birthday, yes. Richard. Happy birthday, Richard. Happy birthday. Twenty uh, first, um, second decade of twenty first. Is that what he's trying to say? Is that how he's trying to do it? I don't even know how that. Did I just that put that him means. on blast by saying his age. I don't even know what that means. I'm like, I don't, you guys are all younger than I am, so I don't know. I don't know what that means. But it's his birthday. Happy birthday, Richard. Happy I hope birthday. you have a continue. Obviously, happy birthday month. It's your month. There you go. To do what you want. Okay, so now now I'm being a hypocrite because I'm going to say he's going to get turned this weekend. You're going to get turned. See, there you, there you go. go. See, there you go. <laughs> well, he didn't say he got rid of it yet. You, you, that's a word you think we should get rid yeah, of. Yeah. You'll okay, take your you time. Go. You'll get there. Thanks for being on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yes, thank yeah. you. Uh, again, you're at Keller Williams, Silicon Beach. Uh -huh. Tell folks to get in there. Where they can so you can him. find me on Twitter, Jer Morales, J-E-R-R-M-O-R-A-L-E-S. Uh, search me on Twitter, Facebook, add me, follow me. On Instagram, you can find me at Jer, J-E-R-R, Curl, C-U-R-L. Follow me. See all of Abuelita's enchiladas. Look at pictures of me walking Jack. See all the cool things I'm doing in real estate. And, hey, watch my journey and my growth throughout life. And yes. I think you'll, you'll have a good time. And hopefully you can draw inspiration from that. Yes. I really hope that they can draw inspiration from that. Well, you give me good hope for the young people there today. There we go. That's what I like to hear. So you, some of us old folks are stubborn. So I'm glad. <laughs> I like to see that young people are doing stuff out yeah, there. Yeah. So I'll always support you always. Thank you. I appreciate that it. All. And you can follow us on uh, on Facebook at, you know, uh, Breaking Into. On, you, on YouTube and iTunes, we're under BlackHollywoodLive.com. And it's Breaking Into. And I have a bunch of episodes on it. I say it's number 37. So you can be in there. Ooh. We're getting to 40. We're getting there. Yeah, nice. All still younger numbers than me. And then on Twitter, I'm at James Lott Jr. And you can use the hashtag breaking into. It's at Black at BHL Online. That's at BHL Online. And we can continue the discussion. If you have any questions for him, you can give them to me. I'll pass you on to him. If you want to get a house, I'll pass it on to him. Just, <laughs> you can, I can be the conduit. You can send there it to me. Go. We'll get there. Any comments, please comment. And let me know what you think about the episode. And thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. This is a show. I love doing this show so much here for Black Hollywood Live. I'm James Lott Jr. and I will see you next time.
from producers Maria Menounos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.